In this video, I'll describe a way to figure out how much error there is in an approximation of instantaneous rates of change. Previously, we looked at a photo of a baseball player trying to hit a ball, and asked how fast the baseball was traveling at the moment the photo was taken. In the last video, we computed the average speed of the baseball by figuring that it traveled 0.572 inches in one two thousandth of a second, which was 1,144 inches per second, or 65 miles per hour. But what if we really wanted to find the speed of the ball at a particular moment in time, say, when the ball was exactly at four-tenths of a second after it was thrown by the pitcher? So, when the ball was right here. As we saw previously, we can't know this instantaneous speed precisely because we always need a change in time to compute a speed. We can only approximate the instantaneous speed with an average speed. But maybe we could get a better approximation if we used a slightly faster camera. Previously, to figure out the average speed of the ball while the shutter was open, we looked at the entire length of the blurry ball in the photo. Now, what if, instead of a camera with a shutter speed of one two thousandth of a second, we used a shutter speed of one four thousandth of a second? Then we can think about splitting the blurry image into two parts, each of which corresponds to one four thousandth of a second time interval. In the part that corresponds to the first four thousandth of a second interval, we know that the ball moved from here to here. Thus the ball traveled this far in that four thousandth of a second. Similarly, for the part that corresponds to the second four thousandth of a second interval, the ball would have traveled from here to here, so it would have traveled this far. Let's think about each of those parts for a moment. We know that the baseball is slowing down a bit due to air resistance. This means that whatever speed we calculate for part one will be an overestimate of the actual speed of the ball four tenths of a second after it was thrown. Similarly, the speed we calculate for part two will be an underestimate of the actual speed of the ball four-tenths of a second after it was thrown. Next, we can measure the distance the ball traveled in each part. In part one, the ball traveled 0.292 inches. In part two, the ball traveled 0.28 inches. We know that the average speed of the ball during part one is the ball's change in position divided by the corresponding change in time. Here, that would be 0.292 inches per 1 4,000th of a second, which is equal to 1,168 inches per second. We could do the same computation for the second frame to get an average speed of 1,120 inches per second. Putting this together, we see that 1,168 inches per second is an overestimate of the instantaneous speed of the ball at 4 tenths of a second and 1,120 inches per second is an underestimate of the instantaneous speed of the ball at four-tenths of a second. Now, since speed requires a change in time, we can never determine the speed at a single moment in time. However, we have used average speeds to approximate the instantaneous speed, to see that the instantaneous speed is between these two averages. And, in particular, we know that the amount our approximations could be off by is at most the difference between the overestimate and the underestimate, in this case, 48 inches per second. And, theoretically, we can make this maximum error as small as we'd like by increasing the shutter speed of the camera, that is, by decreasing the interval of time over which the camera's shutter is open. So, in summary, if you want to approximate the speed of an object at an instant in time, you need to compute the average speed over an interval before that instant, and then compute the average speed over an interval right after that instant. If the rate is just increasing, or if the rate is just decreasing, then you can use the context to determine which of these average speeds is an overestimate and which is an underestimate of the instantaneous speed. This gives you a range of values for the instantaneous speed and we know that the error in our approximation must be less than the difference between the overestimate and the underestimate.